Now, how can any of us forget Biden's refrain about Charlottesville, endlessly repeated for dramatic effect? Close your eyes. Remember what you saw. Neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and the KKK coming out of the fields. Coming out of those fields at night, Virginia, with lighted torches. Their veins bulging. Veins bulging. Their veins bulging. Chanting the same anti-Semitic bile heard across Europe in the 30s. Well, no one on his staff apparently has told him about the other rallies happening across the United States, filled with fanatics with militant chants. Glory to the martyrs! Glory to the martyrs! And just outside of Chicago in Skokie, Illinois, home of the state's Holocaust Museum, we saw some of the more shocking demonstrations taking place. Remember, that city was famously the site of the neo-Nazi demonstrations that were at issue in one of the Supreme Court's seminal First Amendment cases. Now, those protesting today might wave a different flag, but their target seems to be the same. And instead of purely free speech, these ones are engaging in straight violence. Where's the White House? Joining me now, Piss Peter Christos, the man you saw who was just attacked by pro-Palestinian protesters. He's also a college activist with Turning Point USA. Peter, first, um, how are you doing after that, and what led to that moment? Thanks for having me, Laura. I'm doing a lot better now. I do have bruising on my hands and on my back, as well as a concussion. What basically caused that event was I was at this pro-Israel event, and I was going to meet one of my coworkers outside of the event. And as we met together at his parking spot, we tried to get back into the pro-Israel event. But when we went to the police barricades, they denied us entry. So we had to walk all the way back through a lot of these pro-Palestinian protesters. And at this point, the entire mob already saw that we were pro-Israel. So they began following us and they were screaming at us, calling, saying that we were committing genocide, calling us Nazis. And they began kicking my coworker. And as we began to make our way towards the end of the street, we saw an Orthodox Jewish couple. And the mob grew angrier and started following us. And at one point, I just got, you know, I got separated from my coworker. And it was just myself and this couple. And the next thing I knew, I was punched in the back of the head, pushed into bushes, and then punched repeatedly, kicked in the head, and hit with a flagpole. Uh, thankfully, there was a police officer there that helped me get to safety. But the overall situation was, very, very scary. Um, and this is something that, you know, we, we have people who are pro-Israel are subjected to. Well, it seems like, again, the White House or Biden or his, uh, you know, his supporters, uh, they seem to have you know, only a focus on one type of protester. And they use that one type of protester as their vehicle for attacking all conservatives or anyone who ever voted for Trump. They did that brilliantly. But in this case, you're attacked. It looks like other people are harassed, who are uh, obviously, you know, they're Jewish Americans. And yet they're calling you a Nazi when they clearly seem to be vehemently anti-Israel. That, that, that's just stupid. They're just stupid yeah. people at this point. You know, they were going to that Orthodox Jewish man and his wife's face who were older and they were calling them Nazis as well. What? And this lady was shaking, yes. It was one of the most craziest things I've ever seen in my life. And this lady was shaking and trying to pull her camera out to record. And I said, miss, don't worry, mm. I'm already recording. And all we had to like, all I was worried about in that moment was just trying to get out, uh, get out of that situation safely. Um, but oh well, yeah, you could end up scary. with a brain bleed like Andy No, you know, when he, when he was yeah. uh, attacked out on the, in the Pacific Northwest against uh, by Antifa. Now, given the work that you do, uh, with young people at Turning Point USA. Why do you think so many young people are flocking uh, toward this pro-Palestinian cause in, in Hamas at our, at our universities? Is it just deeply tied to anti-Americanism? Is it just more propaganda on social media or a combination? I think a lot of it is a lack of research. You know, I'm not going to tell anyone what to believe, but I do encourage them to do their research. And I think that a lot of these universities and their professors who are actively supporting, you know, a lot of these bad things that are happening in Israel are the reason why a lot of these students, mostly college students, are 
pro-Palestine, but, you know, we are pro-peace. We're pro-Israel. We're pro-everything. We want everyone to live safely together and to love one another mm -hmm. because we're all humans. We all bleed. But I think a lot of the students don't want to do the research or the time and effort, and they kind of want to go with, like, yeah. No, they're not. They they're really... Peter. Peter, you're young. Let me just tell you the way it is. Okay. It's not that they're not wanting to do it. They, they just, they're feeling. Everyone's emoting and feeling. Nobody's thinking, and they're not interested in thinking. Peter, thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.